Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the male reproductive glands. Now as I said, there are three important reproductive glands which play a very important role in the process of uh, reproduction in, inside a male's body. That is the prostate gland. So what is the, where is the prostate gland located? So in this side view, you can see this is the prostate gland. In the front view, this is the prostate gland. Right. So this prostate gland secretes a milky fluid that helps in sperm's mobility. Now something is common to all the glands. Now whatever reproductive glands we will talk about, we will see that what is important in them is their secretion. So secretion from these reproductive glands constitute a seminal plasma and this seminal plasma helps in the mobility or the transportation of sperms. So we will see that. So this prostate gland also secretes a milky fluid and this fluid helps in sperm's mobility. Now what happens is when you have a lot of fluid then mobility becomes easier. For example, let us take an example where you make a paper boat. Now if you want the paper boat to be mobile, that is if you want the paper boat to move from one place to another, how will it move? It will not move on its own, right? But if you have water flowing there and you put the paper boat on that what will happen the boat will start moving along with the moving water so when you have a lot of fluid it actually helps in the mobility of things which are present in the fluid so similar is the case here so the sperms are mobile due to the presence of their tail but when there are a lot of secretions so a lot of fluid being present it helps in the mobility of the sperms so next is the seminal vesicles so what do the seminal vesicles do? They produce viscous fluid which help in sperm mobility in female. Okay, now seminal vesicles are present in the males. So these are the seminal vesicles, right? So they are the brown colored structures. They are the seminal vesicles. So these glands will secrete a fluid that will be little viscous. Now, what happens to the sperms? Now the sperms will move out of the uh, penis and then it will move inside the body of the female. So even the sperm has to have that mobility inside the female's body. So that mobility is being provided by this viscous fluid which is secreted by the seminal vesicles. So this seminal vesicles also exist in pairs. So here you can see this is one and this is another one. So they exist in pairs. And the third gland is the cowper's gland which is also known as the bulbourethral gland. So it is also called bulbourethral gland. Why it is called bulbourethral gland? Because if you look at it, it is like two small bulbs. So that is how it looks like. And it is present very close to the urethra. That is why it is called bulbourethral. So it is an exocrine gland which exists in pairs. So here also if you see one and two. So it exists in pairs and it secretes mucus to lubricate the female passage. Now, now the female passage as well as the penis both need to be lubricated so that the penis can actually be inserted inside the vaginal passage, right? So that lubrication of both the penis as well as the female passage is provided by the secretion of the cowper's gland. So it secretes a slimy substance like mucus. So if you have something slimy, what happens? The penis tends to slip at along the surface of the female passage. So this is, as I said, it is also known as bulbourethral gland. So its main job is to do lubricate. So it, lubrication is its main function. So if you see overall, all these three glands, they give some secretions and the secretion from these glands together form the form a fluid called the seminal plasma or seminal plasma, whatever you call it. And this seminal plasma fluid is rich in a lot of stuffs. For example, it is rich in fructose, calcium and some of the enzymes. So the fluid which comes out of the penis through the urethra, it does not contain sperm alone. It also contains all the secretions from all these glands. It also contains calcium, fructose, enzymes. So everything is there along with the sperm. So now let us look at the internal structure of the testis. As I said, now by now we got a fair idea about 
how the male reproductive system look like what are the different parts of the male reproductive system and what do they do but as i said that testes are the primary sex organs in um, case of uh, the male uh, reproductive system right so we need to understand the internal structure of the testes so that we can understand exactly how sperms are produced inside the testes okay so first let us understand the internal structure now again the internal structure of testes can ha have some important parts so let us quickly talk about those parts so let us look at the important parts which form the internal structure of testes so some of the important parts are the testicular lobules that is the testis is divided into different sections and those sections are known as the lobules next is the seminiferous tubules the most important part of the testis this is male germ cells and male germ cells are the one which actually start the process of uh, sperm formation now whenever i'm using the term sperm sperm is nothing but the male gametes or the male sex cells Sertoli cells, Leydig cells, these are specialized cells which serve a special purpose. So we will talk about them very soon. Reti testis, Vasa efferentia. So these are again tube-like structure which help to carry the sperms which were produced inside the testis. So let us quickly look at the detailed structure. Let us talk about each of the parts one by one. So let us start with testicular lobules. So what are testicular lobules? So here if you see, this is the testis. So inside the testis, you can see there are sections. This is one section. This is another section. This is yet another section. So each of these sections are known as the testicular lobules. So these are each small segment inside testis. So one testis has multiple small, small segments and each of those segments are called lobules. Since they are present inside the testis, so they are called testicular lobules. Now approximately 250 lobules exist in a testis. So in one testis, you have almost 250 lobules. So that is a big number, right? Now that is one thing. So testicular uh, lobules is one thing. Now the next part that we will talk about is the seminiferous tubules. Now as this name says tubules, so they are some tubular structures. They are highly coiled tubular structures which are present inside the lobules. Now inside each lobule you can see highly coiled tube-like structures. So here you see the white colored structures which are highly coiled tube-like structure. So these highly coiled tube-like structures are seminiferous tubules. And inside these seminiferous tubules, sperms are actually produced. So approximately one to three exist in a lobule. So inside one lobule, you have around one, two or three seminiferous tubules. So one tubule is like a very highly coiled tubular structure. Sperms are produced inside these tubules. So seminiferous tubules are the most important structures inside the testis because this is where the exact sperm production take place. Next is the male germ cells. Now what are the male germ cells? So let us have a look. So these are the cells which form the inner lining of the seminiferous tubules. Now these tubules which you can see here something like this very extremely coiled structures. Now inside this tubule, the inner lining is formed by certain cells. Now two, there are two types of cells which form the inner lining of the seminiferous tubules. So one such cell is the male germ cells. They, they are present on the inner surface of the seminiferous tubules. And what do they do? These are the ones which undergo meiosis to form sperms. Meiosis is what? The reduction division where the chromosome number reduces to half. So the male germ cells are the diploid cells but they undergo meiosis to form haploid sperms. So the male germ cells are, the where, are, the, are those cells from where the story of sperm formation starts. So these male germ cells are also known as spermatogonia. Why spermatogonia? Because they give rise to sperms. So from that sperms it got a name spermatogonia. Next are the Sertoli cells. Now what are Sertoli cells? So these are cells which again form the inner lining of seminiferous tubules. Just now I was telling that the inner lining of the tubules are formed by two types of cells. One type of cell is the male germ cells. 
which will undergo meiosis to form sperms. The other type of cells are the Sertoli cells and what will these cells do? They will provide nourishment to the male germ cells. Now these male germ cells in order to undergo meiosis they need some energy. For energy they need some nutrition. So that nutrition is provided by the Sertoli cells. So the male germ cells and the Sertoli cells they both together form the inner lining of the seminiferous tubules. Next are the Leydig cells. Now what are Leydig cells? These are those cells which are present outside the seminiferous tubule. So here if you see these quiet structures are the seminiferous tubules. But even outside the seminiferous tubules. So here if you see there are some spaces in between right. So that those spaces are called the interstitial spaces. And there are cells which are present in those interstitial spaces. And they are called interstitial cells or Leydig cells. So both the names are used interchangeably whether interstitial cells or Leydig cells. Now why are they important? What do they do? They synthesize and secrete androgens and what are androgens? Now androgens play a very important role as far as uh, the male secondary characters are involved. So these androgens, now one example of androgen is testosterone which is a male hormone. So androgens control the functions of the male sex as male sexual accessory ducts and the glands. So it controls the function of the male reproductive glands which, are, which we were talking about just now. Whether you talk about the prostate gland, the seminal vesicles or the cowper's gland, they are all reproductive glands and they secrete, uh, their secretions are important in the uh, process of sperm production right but somebody there has to be some hormone which will control the secretion from these reproductive glands so those hormones are the androgens and these Leydig cells produce androgens so they synthesize that is they manufacture androgen and they also secrete androgen so this is also important right so the sperm protection production thing is taken care inside the seminiferous tubules this tubule like structure and the production of androgen is taken care by the interstitial cells. Next is the rete testes. So what is rete testes? It is a network of tubules which carry sperms from seminiferous tubules to vasa efferentia. Now once the sperms are produced, where will they get produced? The sperms will get produced in the uh, inside the seminiferous tubules. Now the sperms need to be carried out of the testis so that it can reach the vas deferens. You remember vas deferens which will again connect to the um, ejaculatory duct. Right. So first of all, it has to be taken out of the testis. So immediately from the seminiferous tubules, it moves into vasa efferentia. So where is vasa efferentia? So somewhere here you have vasa efferentia. In order to reach there, there are a network of tubules which take it to vasa efferentia, and they are called rete testes. So here in this picture, where you see rete testes, so here you see. This, uh, these form the rete testis. So here you have these tube like structures are the rete testis. So immediately after the seminiferous tubules all of them get collected in rete testis and what happens in rete testis? It is a site for fluid absorption. So more and more fluid gets reabsorbed. So what, what will be the result of that? The sperm will get more concentrated. Now had the rete testis not been there then what would have happened? In that case, the sperms would have not been that concentrated. And had it not been concentrated, then the sperm which is actually entering the epididymis will not be concentrated and hence this might result in infertility. Because for fertility, that is because of, uh, in order to have prop effective reproduction, the sperms need to be concentrated. It should not be like too much of fluid being there. So re fluid reabsorption has to take place and that is taken care by the rete testis. Now once it, the fluid, extra fluid is reabsorbed, the sperm is all concentrated and then that concentrated fluid passes on to the vasa efferentia. So the next part is vasa efferentia. The word efferentia is derived from efferent. You remember we spoke about afferent and efferent. So efferent is something which takes things away or which takes things out. So it, this vasa efferentia will connect the rete testis to the initial section of epididymis. So where is epididymis? So here if you see this portion is epididymis. 
So here you have epididymis. See here that it is written epididymis. So basically these are the seminiferous tubules. Here sperms are produced. It will get into the retained testis. It will become more concentrated. Then it will pass through vasa efferentia. So here this tube, coiled tube like structures that is vasa efferentia. From vasa efferentia it will move to epididymis and from epididymis it will finally move to vas deferens. So that is how it will move. So different parts of the different section of the tubular structure is given a different name based upon their structure or their function. So vasa efferentia is, is it is there just to connect rete testis to epididymis. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.